Our next speaker is Dr. James Liu. He is a distinguished AI scientist working in clinical pharmacology at Genentech, and his presentation is AI Partner Dynamical Model Discovery for Precision Medicine. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Hello, my name is James Liu. In this presentation, I wish to leave you with a message that predictive dynamical models are the key to enable precision medicine and discovering such models from modern data calls for AI. In the current digital age, we are facing data deluge as represented by the following three numbers. The first one refers to the growing number of patients, for instance, from real-world data sources. The second number refers to the dimensionality of the data at each measurement. Here, 20,000 is the number of gene expressions from RNA-seq. Finally, the last number refers to the number of dynamical measurements we get from a single patient from digital devices. Looking at all these numbers, you might ask, how do we adapt the way we go about performing dynamical modeling of complex data so as to achieve the goals of precision medicine? We make the claim that the answer is to leverage AI as partner in dynamical model discovery. The first step to partner with machines is to expand our modeling language. Our dynamical models have been stated as mathematical expressions. With each choice of the expression being used, there is an implicit inductive bias associated with it. Such inductive bias may consist of the assumption that certain relationships are linear, for instance. As we know, in the age of machine learning, we have seen much progress of such data-driven algorithms in performing various tasks. Such models are often expressed in the language of neural networks. And with the advent of new methodologies, such as neural ODEs, we are now able to mix calculus with neural networks. These models also come with a certain inductive bias, and we can in fact encode well-accepted pharmacological principles into the architectures themselves. How might we go about partnering with machines in making dynamical model discovery? Let's go back to classical modeling and think about how Newton did it. Newton had observation data of the planets, and from them, he used his analytical mind to abstract the most relevant aspects of the data. He then came up with a proposal that a single set of dynamical law can describe the orbit of all planets. In analogy to classical modeling, we propose an AI-partnered modeling approach. Here, instead of using human intellect for data abstraction, we'll use neural networks. Similarly, we believe that there's an underlying dynamical law. However, this law will be expressed in terms of a neural network rather than an algebraic formula. And rather than leveraging arbitrary neural networks, we believe that the right approach is to build neural networks in a pharmacology-informed manner. And this is where human intelligence comes in, as I'll discuss next. So what are the hallmarks of pharmacology-informed neural network architectures? It intertwines the two complementary concepts, pharmacology and neural networks. And what are the pharmacological concepts that we utilize? These include the following. Firstly, the causality between dose, pharmacokinetics, and pharmacodynamics. Secondly, we would like to learn an underlying dynamical law from the data. And thirdly, we would like to be able to simulate what-if scenarios. For instance, if the same patient was treated with different dosing regimen, that is what's called counterfactual simulations. 
I next illustrate the first point of what we mean by a causal relationship. Shown on the left is the causal chain that is typically assumed in pharmacology modeling, namely dose is what drives PK and PK is what drives PD. And the dynamics of these profiles are driven by physiological processes of what the body does to the drug and drug does to the body respectively. This set of assumptions is translated into equations that you see on the right, whereby dosing enters as a driving term on the right hand side of the PK equation. And in turn, PD is driven by the PK. And this causal chain provides a key assumption in the applications that we will be looking at next. The previously mentioned principles and AI partner modeling approach in making PKPD predictions have been demonstrated in this paper published in Nature Machine Intelligence. As the longitudinal clinical PD data with used plate accounts collected from a number of clinical trials from patients treated with the anti-cancer therapy, TDM1. And by applying the deep learning machinery, we were able to discover a neural PKPD model from the data. And this model is set up in such a way that for each individual patient, the observed PK and PD data would enable the model to predict the future PKPD profiles under the proposed dosing regimen. And such a model could have potential applications in areas such as therapeutic drug monitoring. Let's now look at the model and results in more details. What are the key components of the model? The PKPD data at the patient level is passed to an encoder neural network which has a task of performing data abstraction. The product of the encoder is a low dimensional embedding vector for each patient. The aim of the decoder is to perform predictions using a single system of ordinary differential equations. In particular, the dose amount can correspond to either the actual values given to the patient or to simulate a novel dosing regimen. So how well does it perform in the context of making individualized predictions? These plots on the left give an illustration of using the model to make predictions shown here for two patients. The blue circles indicate the observed data from these patients up to day 21. From these data, the neural PKPD predictions are shown in solid blue lines, which are then compared to the actual measured values shown in open triangles. We can also compare the model against predictions from the population PKPD model that was previously built, here shown as green dashed lines. So how well does the proposed model perform? Here, we look at the R-square of the model predictions versus data. In particular, we've looked at two different sets of observation windows, either up to day 42 or day 21. As for the prediction window, we looked at 42 days and beyond. And looking at the results shown in the first row, we see that the neural PKPD model was able to better predict the future using data up to day 42. And what are the potential implications offered by this methodology? We show that using data of just up to day 21, that is half of the duration of day 42, as in the population approach, we can nevertheless achieve comparable R-square of 0.45. And this illustrates the potential for improving predictivity 
for the purposes of precision medicine. And why was the deep learning model more predictive? We believe this is due to the fact that neural network was able to explore a wider space of models than we humans can do by hand. We now shift gears and move on to oncology applications. Cancers are challenging diseases to treat, and the underlying reason being the complexity and heterogeneity of tumors. And in order to help address drug development questions, over the past decades, various pharmacometrics-based tumor dynamic models have been developed. The addition of clinical data as based on covariates have also been used in pharmacometrics efforts as well. However, modern technologies have enabled the generation of large multimodal datasets. And how do we fully leverage these complex data to realize the promise of precision medicine? In this paper, Acosta, Eric Topol et al. proposed that the increasing availability of data from various sources set the stage for the development of AI solutions that capture the complexity of human health and disease. In particular, they highlight the opportunity in precision health to integrate data sources, including omics, to capture more dynamic and real-time information. So we ask, how do we marry dynamical data with these other data across modalities? We believe the right approach is to partner with AI in generating neural ODE models for tumor dynamics and enable personalized predictions. So what are the key components of the proposed approach? They are similar to what we saw earlier in the PKPD setting. First of all, the longitudinal tumor SLD data at the patient level is passed to an encoder, which has the task of performing data abstraction and delivers a low dimension patient embedding vector. This vector P then goes into the decoder, which is an ODE system with the right hand side represented by a neural network. And the aim of the decoder is to perform predictions using a single system of ODEs. It turns out that this patient embedding vector can also be used to predict the patient's overall survival. Further technical details will become available in our upcoming publication. So what are the potential benefits of this proposed approach? Firstly, we show that this can enable making unbiased tumor dynamic predictions from early data, which is not a trivial challenge for existing pharmacometrics models. Secondly, we show the methodology could improve patient survival predictions at the individual level as measured by the C-index. Finally, the model could be linked up with other AI models in a way that is explainable, as I'll give an example next. As a step towards enhancing tumor dynamics predictions with the use of high dimensional data, we've taken the step to propose a neural network that not only takes in longitudinal tumor size data, but also RNA-seq. In particular, graph neural networks were used to encode the RNA-seq data, which leverages tissue-specific functional gene networks available from the literature. The graph encoder, in conjunction with the tumor dynamics encoder, come together to help make the base tumor dynamic predictions under various drug treatments. There is promising results demonstrating that gene expression data can help improve tumor dynamic predictions from early data. I would like to summarize the, the main points covered in this presentation. We first showed motivation that dynamical modeling of modern data calls for partnership with AI. 
We then propose that from college informed neural network architectures enable model construction in a principled way. We show that these model architectures can enhance personalized predictions. Finally, we alluded to how integrating GNNs with neural ODEs show significant promise for fusing omics with dynamical data. Finally, I would like to acknowledge my many colleagues and collaborators with whom I've worked relating to the topics covered in this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.